Welcome to your Daily Five for Wednesday, December 6th, 2023. This is going to be one of the weirder reviews I've ever done because this movie that I'm going to be talking about today, and I will be talking about at length on Friday, is honestly one of the most confounding films I've ever watched because I have no idea what the intent of it is. And uh, boy, there's so much backstory to this, but the movie is from 2002 and it's called Tiptoes. And it's by the same writer, and in this case, director, he directed this one as well, from yesterday's review, Forbidden Zone. Now, these movies could not be more opposite in terms of you would not look at these movies and think the same mind was behind them in any way, uh, superficially. And yet, I have to honestly say, I'm not kidding, that I think Tiptoes is a weirder movie than Forbidden Zone because I know what Forbidden Zone was trying to do. It was trying to be exactly what it was, which is a art house weird vanity musical thing by people who just wanted to make a weird movie that catered to their weird taste. That makes sense completely when you watch it. It feels like it is cohesive in terms of its bizarre nature. Tiptoes seesaws back and forth so radically between what seems like an earnest attempt to make a movie about little people crossed over with some kind of R-rated comedy, and it never really feels like it knows what it wants to be. Now, I some people will know this, but this is a heavily chopped up version of the movie. Apparently, the director, Matthew Bright, was fired, and the studio cut together this 90-minute version of it, which feels very, very clear when you're watching it. It, ma- it does not make really any sense, because, I mean, I'll play clips on the Friday show. You will hear how scenes... They just, they whipsaw all over the place. And it's, when you get to the end of it, and boy, what an ending this movie has, if you can even call it an ending, you really don't know what you just watched. It is, it's so strange. I mean, I was talking out loud to the movie. I, I, when I got, when when the movie ended, I was just, I was yelling at the screen because I couldn't believe that this is where the movie concluded. But there were multiple points where I really just, I must have looked like I was having a migraine because I was trying to figure out what this movie wanted to be. Now, I would really be curious. I don't know if there's any uncut version of this thing that exists. My hunch is that there isn't. But some of the people involved have said that the uncut version or the original cut, whatever you want to call it, was actually a very good movie. And there are moments that do feel like they are from a movie that is trying to actually say something. But then it's it's just, and this might be just a result of studio interference in cutting a movie. It's certainly not like there is a precedent for that, that, that you can destroy a movie through bad editing and stupid decisions. But what it ends up being is a really weird, confusing movie in a totally different way than Forbidden Zone. Like I said, Forbidden Zone is trying to be an arty, strange you know, talking heads level weirdness type of thing where you understand that this is the product of people who see the world very radically different than most people. That movie makes sense that way. This movie is structured as sort of a comedy drama hybrid, but it never feels like it has any identity. It's it's totally all over the place. The performance, oh, Peter Dinklage, oh boy, in this movie, this accent he's doing where he's supposed to be a French Marxist, I have the clips of that. You will enjoy that on Friday. It is, it's just, it is more out there in being a straightforward movie than Forbidden Zone was out there in being an art house film. That, that's what I mean. I, I, I'm not kidding when I say that. This is a more bizarre film than Forbidden Zone is. It really is. I mean, I, I, I would be, I have to look up stuff on this movie. I have to see if I can research this before we do the Friday show and see if I can find out anything about what happened here. Because, I mean, I would say watch it. Watch it because it is it is mesmerizing in its messiness and its tonal inconsistency. It is really amazing to, to behold a film that is this jumbled and incoherent in terms of what it's trying to be. I mean, the movie is straightforward in terms of the plot, more or less. But what it feels like is like two different movies that were made by the same actors and everything were chopped together in a wood chipper. It's remarkable. Again, 2002 tiptoes. There's nothing like it. Later.